Hey guys, it's Spiros from The Self-Help Photographer. Today we are going to talk about image stabilization. And some of you noticed that I did not talk about image stabilization at all when I talked about sharpness in the three videos I did on how to get tack sharp photos. You might be wondering, why did I not talk about image stabilization? You might think that would be important to getting sharp images. So image stabilization is technology that has been developed that reduces blur in your photographs due to camera shape. You can think of image stabilization like shock absorbers in your car. When you're driving your car down the road and you're hitting bumps and you go over railroad tracks and they're shaking, the shock absorbers in the car absorb all of that shock and all of that motion so that the passengers in the car aren't bounced and thrown all over the place. In photography, these shock absorbers are generally put inside the lenses around one of the glass elements. So if you think of the lens as the car, you can think of the glass element in the lens as the passenger. What image stabilization is designed to do is to keep that glass element, the passenger, steady in the car relative to the subject that you are photographing. Without image stabilization, if you're holding the camera and the lens is shaking, all of the glass elements are also shaking. And when they're shaking, it's recording a blurry image because the whole lens is moving. But if you have image stabilization and your lens is shaking, but the shock absorbers keep the glass element in place, you're able to capture a sharp photo because the glass element doesn't move and that allows the lens to project a sharp image onto the camera sensor. Now, I want you to understand that I'm giving you a very simplified version of the technology, but that is basically what it does. And the technology is typically applied to lenses, but in some cases, they actually apply this shock absorber system to the camera sensor instead of to the lenses. So if this is how it works, how does this help us with our photography? What does it do for us? If you remember from the sharpness videos, particularly the third one, we talked about the focal length and the shutter speed in getting sharp photos. There is what's called the reciprocal rule, which tells you that if you have a lens of a certain focal length, you can safely handhold that lens and get a sharp photograph at one over the focal length. For example, if I have a 50 millimeter lens, I would wanna shoot at no slower than 1 50th of a second in order to get a sharp photo. If I have a 200 millimeter lens, then I would wanna shoot at no slower than 1 200th of a second. What image stabilization is supposed to do is allow you to handhold the camera while shooting at slower shutter speeds than one over the focal length of your lens, but still get a sharp photo. Now, according to the claims, depending upon the lens maker and the technology, you can shoot at shutter speeds up to four stops slower than one over the focal length of your lens. With image stabilization, theoretically, you could shoot that same 200 millimeter lens and get a sharp photo with a shutter speed down to 1 25th of a second. That's three stops slower than 1 200th of a second. The problem is that the lenses you typically find image stabilization on are mediocre lenses. And image stabilization is designed to take a mediocre lens and they try to make it less mediocre. Let's take an example. Now this is a lens that I get tons of questions about. The 18 to 200 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 VR2 Nikon lens. Let's say you're using this lens to shoot some basketball. You're in a gym with crappy gym lighting. You're zoomed out to 200 millimeters and you've got your aperture wide open, which is f5.6 on this lens. And let's say your ISO is at 3200. At those settings, you're able to get a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second. That's the fastest shutter speed that you can get. Now with image stabilization, you can take a photograph and you're supposed to get a sharp shot because even though you're shooting at 200 millimeters, the image stabilization will stabilize that lens for you so you get a sharp shot. The problem is you're shooting sports. And if you remember from the sharpness part three video, when you're shooting sports, you generally want a shutter speed of at least 1 200th of a second to stop the motion of your subject. Basketball players running across a basketball court are not gonna be frozen at 1 100th of a second. Now let's compare that to a lens that I recommend often, which is the 80 to 200 millimeter f2.8 Nikon AF lens. This is a lens that has no image stabilization. 
But if you put this lens in the exact same scenario, you've got the 18 to 200, which shoots f5.6 wide open. ISO 3200 gives us 1 100th of a second. If we take the 80 to 200 into the same situation, we can open the aperture to f2.8. At ISO 3200, that's going to give us a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second. 1 400th of a second is two full stops faster than 1 100th of a second, and more than likely it's going to be fast enough to freeze the action you're trying to shoot, particularly in this basketball scenario. Now, not everything will be frozen by 1 400th of a second, but the point is that image stabilization is designed to allow you to shoot slower shutter speeds and get a sharp photo. But that's only good if your subject isn't moving. Whether it's a person, people are always moving. What if you're shooting wildlife? Animals, they hardly cooperate with what we want them to do. Subjects are always moving. And image stabilization does nothing to freeze the moving subject. It's only designed to deal with blur that comes from hand holding your camera. And that is the reason that I will buy a lens with a constant wide maximum aperture over an image stabilized lens every single time. Wider maximum apertures are designed to allow you to shoot at faster shutter speeds. And more often than not, you need a faster shutter speed to freeze your subject. Image stabilization allows you to shoot lower shutter speeds, but if your subject is moving, that's gonna be no good. Now, I've been accused of old thinking in terms of image stabilization and maximum aperture lenses, and I wanna be clear here. I'm not opposed to image stabilization, and I'm not opposed to technological advancements in photography. I think this stuff is wonderful. I just think in this particular situation that wider apertures are better than image stabilization. That doesn't mean image stabilization is bad. And in fact, a particular instance that I think image stabilization is fantastic is the case of an arthritic woman that I heard about who was very disappointed because she could not handhold a camera and shoot sharp photos due to her arthritis. But with image stabilization, she was able to start taking sharp photographs hand holding her camera. And I think that is fantastic. So let me be clear, I don't think image stabilization is terrible. I personally, however, choose not to spend my money on it because I would prefer to have a wider maximum aperture. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Now, let me know in the comments, do you use image stabilized lenses and do you think they're better than wide constant aperture lenses? If you have any questions, use the links down in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And most importantly, get out there and take some damn photos. I will see you guys next week. Stabilize this.